Hey guys, welcome to my video. Today I'll be showing you guys how I make protein crystals using the technique hanging drop vapor diffusion. This technique was by far the most consistent crystal yielding technique I've used for my research project, though it didn't give me the best crystals this time. But it was a really fun experience and I'd love to share it with you guys. So I make protein crystals using these crystal plates and in each well I would put in different contents to test out which conditions would yield the best crystals. To start with, I designed my plates, so this includes what I would add into each well and the amount of each component that I will be adding. Majority of the components within each well are the same, and the only thing we vary is the volume of each component that we're adding. This is because we want to test out different concentrations of each component. After planning my plates and preparing all the contents needed, I will be pipetting. This part is quite time consuming and also requires high levels of attention because you will need to be really careful of which well you're working up to so that you don't add double the amount of certain components which would mess up your plate basically. Here I've added all the components into each well and I'm ready to seal up my crystal plate and to do this, I have to cover each well with a cover slip. I would add in protein and precipitin on each cover slip. For this crystal plate, I've designed it to be a one-to-one -one ratio, which means for each drop of protein that I add on the cover slip, I would add in the same volume of precipitin in the corresponding well that it's going to cover. So the drop would contain one-to-one -one ratio of protein and precipitin, and it will be hung upside down facing the well bottom. So since the drop is hanging, this technique is called hanging drop vapor diffusion. In order to stick the cover slips on the plates, you would have to grease your plates beforehand and you basically use it like glue for making crystal plates. After finishing my crystal plates, I will take it to the crystal room for storage where crystals will start to grow and I will check on them often to see where the crystals are forming so it can then be fished out and undergo x-ray diffraction. These are some sitting drop plates I've made a few days ago and now I'm going to have a look to see whether there's any crystals forming. I've got some precipitate here, but it's not crystals. Last week I've made some crystal plates and um, there wasn't any crystals when I took a look at it on Friday, but after the weekend there was actually some crystals that were seen. Unfortunately, no crystals were found, so I had to make more plates and try out more conditions. I found a huge crystal th um, this morning. I've actually got like six plates. So four of them here, one of them under the microscope and another one with a huge, pro um, huge protein crystal inside it. There's loads of precipitate, but not crystal. It's very hard to adjust the wells to make it appear on the screen because you're literally moving small distances. Does it usually happen overnight? Crystallography is is a black magic. It's, you don't know what's going to work, when it's going to work. There's no defined reason. That's why. We, that's why last night yeah. we did 192 plus 192 plus 192 experiments. Lastly, I wanted to show you guys the mosquito, which is used for making sitting drop plates, and it basically does all the work for you, all the pipetting, and it saves a lot of time. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked the video. See you guys next time.